Hi, and welcome to Filmmaker Central. This video is going to be all about switching to DaVinci Resolve. There's no doubt a lot of people have been making videos about switching to DaVinci Resolve. Well, I guess I'm a little early to the game because I switched like six years ago. And in fact, this channel used to be called Learning DaVinci Resolve. I paid for my license. I think get sponsored by DaVinci Resolve or by Blackmagic to promote their product. I even paid to become a certified instructor. So I just love the product. So I switched a long time ago for a couple reasons. First off, cost. Adobe Premiere is $55 a month, $54.90, right? Let's call it $55 a month. That's a lot of money. You know, just do simple math, right? It's over $600 a year, a year. Now I switched six years ago. That means I would have spent, let's just call it a lot of money on Adobe Premiere. I then went to Final Cut. Final Cut is $300 and it's a one-time purchase, but I just found it very limiting in what I wanted to be able to do. I wanted all the stuff that was in Premiere, but I also wanted all the stuff that was in After Effects. I just didn't want to pay the money every single year. And honestly, I thought those were, were pretty difficult to use. Premiere crashed all the time. It just ran a lot slower than I would expect. And it's just clunky to learn how to use After Effects. It's super powerful, don't get me wrong, but it's just kind of a pain to use. When DaVinci Resolve 12.1 came out and all of a sudden you had all the editing tools and everything was in there, I, I decided to check it out. And one reason was because I was doing tutorials for customers. We, I had a drone store. We were teaching them how to edit video. And I wanted something that I could recommend to them that was very cost effective. Well, it's really hard to, pre or it's really hard to beat DaVinci Resolve because you can get the vast majority of the features for free. That's zero dollars. That's a hell of a value. Now there's a few additional features, things that use the neural engine. There's some plugins that um, don't work in the free version and the free version doesn't take full advantage of GPUs. It'll run off one GPU, but it's not as efficient as the studio version. Well, the studio version is only $299. Now, prior to that, DaVinci Resolve was $999. Prior to that, it was like $12,000. And before that, it was like $25,000. And Resolve only did color grading, but it was used by pretty much any studio that was producing major motion pictures. They would edit in Premiere or Avid. They would take it over to DaVinci Resolve for color grading and then take it back for final in whatever program they were using. DaVinci Resolve started adding more and more of these things together. When Blackmagic Design bought DaVinci Resolve and they started adding the editing tools, they had also bought a After Effects type product called Fusion. They integrated the two. So now you had editing, visual effects, and color grading all in one package. Well, they also had the product called Fairlight, which was this huge station with all the little dials that you see when you're looking in a studio for doing audio mixing. Well, Fairlight is built in DaVinci Resolve. Again, all for free. You get all those things for free. You don't get 100% of everything, but you probably get 95% of everything for free. And that is enough for most anyone at the prosumer, consumer level to be able to do whatever they want. If you're a pro, you're gonna want the studio version. If you're a power user, you're gonna want the studio version. And the studio version is only $2.99. So it's the same price as Final Cut, but you get all the additional features. You get visual effects, you get a high-end digital audio workstation. You get all those things in one package. So for me, it was a no-brainer six years ago and only now, in the last year, a bunch of high-profile YouTubers have been touting the virtues of switching to DaVinci Resolve. 
and for good reason. But it's about damn time because they should have done it ages ago. So what I'm going to do is a series of videos kind of starting at the beginning. Let's go to the basics. Let's get started with DaVinci Resolve and I'll take you through some different features and how things work so that you can start using DaVinci Resolve because to be fair, it can be kind of a steep learning curve. It is not the easiest program in the world to use. It can be a bit intimidating. So let's take a quick run through the interface here. If you look in the bottom here, we have these different pages, the media page, the cut page, the edit page, fusion, color, fair light, and deliver. So we import our media, the cut page is for quick um, editing. I don't really use the cut page very often, but you can, it, for some things, it's really, really nice. Edit, that's where we do all of our major editing. Fusion, we add our compositing, we add our visual effects, all that type of stuff. Color, we do all of our color grading, some tracking, some different things that we can do in color. Fairlight, we do our final on our audio, which most people will never touch the Fairlight page. If you're just doing YouTube videos, you're a content creator, you may never touch Fairlight or even Fusion. You may not ever touch those. And Deliver is where we export our footage. So pretty well logically laid out in the order that you would do things in. So in the media page, we can browse around. We can go up to our different drives. We can grab a folder and just drag it into our, our area down here. This is your, these are called bins. So there's a different bin for each project I'm working on right now. And projects, databases, that's gonna be a whole other video. We'll discuss that. But for right now, we're just gonna cover the absolute basics just so you can get started. So you can grab a folder, drop it in here, it'll maintain the folder structure, and we can start doing some editing. And I'm gonna skip the cut page for right now because um, it doesn't have all the features of the edit page. It's got a lot of them and it's getting better, but I'm gonna start with the edit page. Now the cool thing about the cut page is that's what you're gonna use if you have the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve. So yeah, there it's Mac, Windows, Linux, and iPad now. The iPad is not as full as the desktop version, but it's getting better and better and better. You do need to have one of the newer, more powerful iPads. It won't run on my old iPad Pro Gen 1. So let's go to the edit page. And down here in the bottom, we have our timeline. We have different video tracks. We have different audio tracks. Audio will always get mixed. It's the way audio is, right? You can have voice, you can have music, you can have other things, and that's all going to mix together based on how you have the volume levels. Video is a hierarchy. The higher it is up on these tracks, that's gonna have priority. So you can see I have track here with me standing in the road. And if I go to this next clip, it's a close up of me. Uh, this is for my other channel called Trail Traveler. We do off-road videos. So if one is on top of the other, the one that's on top is gonna have the, the higher priority and that's the one that's gonna be shown. So audio tracks, video tracks, and to bring footage in, we can just double click on a file here, say, okay, yep, yeah, this, is, this is the piece we want. We can hit I to start an in point, O to create an out point, so that's the clip we're gonna have, and we can just drag that down onto our timeline. We can drag it onto different tracks if we want, and you see we have the audio, and the video on the two separate tracks. Now, if we only wanted one of those, we only want the video, you see here we have these two little icons here, that's video, that's audio, that's only. So if I just drag that one, I just get the video. So pretty easy to, to make decisions as to what you want in there. Now I'm also gonna go up to the top here and you see this icon up here. If I click it, or if you just see it as a single like this, um, then you have the source material on one side and we have our timeline on the other. So I can scrub through my timeline or I can scrub through my source and decide where to put that. 
If I want to insert that over here, I can grab this or I can grab just the video or just the audio and I can come over to the right side and say insert. Boom, it'll drop it right in. Now there's also keyboard shortcuts for that. There's some shortcuts on the screen for that. Again, this isn't a deep dive into how to use DaVinci Resolve, just showing you some basics to get you started. Now, we wanna add a music track to this, not a problem. I have a folder full of music here. Now, I use Epidemic Sound, it's $15 a month. Huge selection, like 40,000 pieces of music, 90,000 sound effects. Absolutely love uh, Epidemic Sound. So, I can just grab that, bring it down onto my timeline. Boom, now. Arena, and this is Hay Creek. Okay. But we see that music is really loud. I can either come over here and grab the audio line and adjust it there to change the volume. I can come up here, I've got the audio, that music selected. I can come up here to my inspector. Now the inspector, if you weren't seeing it before, click on inspector in the upper right hand corner and we can set the volume level. I wanna turn that volume level down. East Road. Now this comes and I can do that live the Hell's Creek Road. If you watch our other video, we go through that and on the way back out. Okay, another way is through the mixer. So I'll open the mixer up here and we see audio one, audio two, audio three. We see this is on audio three over here. Out. So we're while we're playing it. And taking this road heading out. I'm gonna kill the voice. So I can just grab that slider to adjust the music, adjust the other one to adjust the dialogue. Again, pretty simple stuff here. Now there's so many features to try and cover here with speed ramping and other stuff. And there's a lot of those videos on the channel already, but I am gonna kind of do them again in order of trying to help you learn how to use DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna go back up here to a video clip. I'm gonna click on that. Now in the inspector, we were on audio, so we see the audio for that clip. We can change the volume. There's voice isolation, which will help get rid of background noise. Dialogue leveler. So if you're, you know, sometimes you talk quiet, sometimes you talk loud, it'll help even that out. You can change the pitch. There's an equalizer, so you can kind of cut out some of the noises if you want or fine tune it. But what I want to show you is video. So here we can zoom in the video. We can change the position of it. We can actually change the rotation, you know, if the camera wasn't straight. Anchor point, pitch, yaw, yeah, sure. We can do something road. If you want really to cool like that. We can crop it in. If this was just supposed to be a, a piece in the background, you know, or a picture in picture, we can crop different sides of it. Dynamic zoom will, automatically do a, a zoom effect. If we're trying to composite this over something else, like see if I can change the opacity from zero to 100%, do that. Speed change, that's gonna be some features we're gonna talk about later. Stabilization, we can stabilize the footage right here. We can do a lens correction, and we can choose what type of retiming and scaling processes that we wanna use. So, super powerful. Once you get into it, I think people tend to pick it up pretty easily, but I want to get you started. We got the media, we got that in, we can put stuff on the timeline. Now, how do we edit something that's on the timeline, make something longer or shorter if we want? Well, here on this clip, if we're, let's say we're, we're just working with this one clip here, and I want it to end at a certain point. So, here, we end the clip, but then you see my hand go up and touch the camera. So I'm gonna go to the end of it. Let's turn the, see the volume up there. All about. That would be the end of the clip. So I can just grab the end of it, as soon as I move the mouse over there, the cursor changes, and I can just pull that in to change where the end point on that video is. Another way would be to use the the blade tool. I can come up here to the blade tool and just cut it right where I want. 
select that one, and delete it. Okay, now I'm on a Mac, so I can hit, if I hit Command B, or Command Blade, I believe that's Alt um, on a, a Windows machine. Now I can delete it. So I can easily change where I want the start point and end points of those videos are. I can put things together pretty easily. And let's find another spot in this video. So I go from one scene to another here. Again, I'm going to kill the system audio. So we go from one scene to another. Let's make that a nice transition, right? Let me close the media pool and open up effects. And over here we have video transitions. And there's a ton of video transitions. Now if you've got a nice fast machine, you'll actually be able to see in a preview of what that's going to look like. Let's just do an easy cross dissolve. We'll drop it on there and we'll play it. And it just dissolves from one shot to another. So adding transitions, super easy. There's a bunch of built-in ones. There's a lot of good free plugins out there. A lot of good stuff when it comes to transitions. So we've got that. We've got some transitions. We've adjusted some audio. We've added some music. We've adjusted the music to make it work. Now we want to export that video. So we're going to go over to the Deliver tab. And we have some custom settings in here. We can do our own. There's some presets in here. So let's look at YouTube. And we'll do that as 2160, which would be 4K. I'm going to give it a name. This will be um, um, Hay Creek Export. Make sure I've got the right resolution, my frame rate. What type of format do I want it to be in? I'll do MP4, H.265. And that's pretty much going to be my basic settings. Now notice down here, I can upload it directly to YouTube. So once it finishes processing, it will just upload it to my YouTube channel. So as soon as I start rendering, I can walk away and it's just going to be done. So I want to add that to my render queue. I see it over here in the queue. I hit render one. Boom off it goes and it's going to start rendering that project. So yes, I think if you haven't decided what edit editor to use yet, I think DaVinci Resolve is a great choice. If you're coming from Final Cut Pro or Premiere or something else and you want a very professional pro quality product to use for your editing, DaVinci Resolve is the right choice. It, you just cannot go wrong with DaVinci Resolve. It checks all the boxes. We'll also get into visual effects and some of those things so you can see how some of that stuff works. But again, this is not stuff we can cover in one single video. I just think it's funny that all of a sudden so many people are switching to DaVinci Resolve. Well, again, I'm not sponsored by Blackmagic. I didn't get a uh, the, the color mixing wheels. I didn't get any of that stuff for free. I have just been a long, long time user of DaVinci Resolve, and I like sharing how to do different things with it. So if you want to see more on DaVinci Resolve from the basics side, then leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you want to learn more, happy to do more videos on the topic. Thanks for watching. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.